Whoa, friends. Welcome back to Commute Talk. Today I thought I would talk a little bit about how to get better as a programmer, or how to get better at programming. Because um, I've been doing this for a long time, and I've had periods where I've been getting better consistently, um, a little bit every day or every week, and then I've had long periods where I didn't improve at all, or maybe even regressed. So I know a little bit about what um, what causes <laughs> what causes this type of development, forwards and backwards. Um, so without further ado, my two main things that I would say to get better at programming is, first one is always have your own projects, um, whether they are your side projects or your main projects, it doesn't really matter, but it is absolutely vital for any programmer who wants to get better to have at least one project where he controls everything, um, like where you are the, the main developer. and. Uh, I've seen that firsthand when I worked at Apple uh, because when I joined Apple I was kind of uh, starstruck or whatever with the whole idea of being Andreas at Apple and I completely lost sight of my own personal project and I had like a few of them before that and, and they all just sat there for years during my tenure at Apple. They just gathered dust basically <clears throat> and uh, some of them I still haven't picked out to play with. Um, but that was actually, like at the time, it seemed like the right thing to do, right? Because now I was part of something bigger. Um, I can make a, I can write code that reaches millions of people, you know? Um, what does it matter about my stupid little side project on GitHub? Um, that's, that's not a good attitude if you want to develop as a programmer. It's, it's really, really important to always have at least one project that you control everything um, because that allows you to experiment outside of what would be acceptable within a project you're doing with others, right? So, um, because experimentation is, is really, really important. Uh, that's, that's one of the key uh, things that you learn from as a programmer is, is just fucking around, basically. So having a project where you can suddenly decide, hey, what if I just try this new build system? Or like, hey, what if I rewrite this thing on top of OpenGL or whatever, right? Um, that type of thing that, that doesn't make sense um, in a collaborative project, but makes perfect sense if it's just your project. You gotta have one of those. And you gotta work on it regularly. Um, and then I think, and I've seen two kinds of people here. Um, there are the people who tend to do well with one big project uh, that lasts for a long time. Um, that seems to be my personality. Um, and then there are other people who seem to excel at having many, many small projects that come and go over time. Uh, it, I don't think it matters like which one of those you are. Just, just figure out which one you are. and uh, uh, Or maybe you're a third type that I don't know about. But figure out your style of development, the one that suits you, and, and go with that. And, and just always have at least one of your own projects going on, whether it's in the background or the foreground, where you can experiment. Because experimentation, um, very, very important. <clears throat> and then the other thing uh, that I think is extremely important to get better as a developer or a programmer is to work together with other people. And uh, doing it for work is great. Like if you're working on a programming team, um, you're probably getting a lot of this already. At least if you do, if you do the basic good stuff like uh, code review, um, and uh, you know you have like um, you communicate about what you're working on with each other. Um, that that will give you already quite a lot. Uh, if you want to really really get better. Uh, and make efficient use of your time, I would suggest also getting into some form of open source development, uh, whether it is um, on a large scale or on a small, small scale, it doesn't really matter. It's like the same thing there with the types of uh, project, types of people. Um, some people like small open source projects, some people like big ones, some people like to do little projects with their friends. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but what does matter is, uh, I, I think, participating in something that is voluntary um, because when you're doing collaboration work um, as part of employment then 
it doesn't have that, I don't know, that air to it, that lightness to it that working on open source does. Because when you're working on an open source project out of your own free will, you can just up and leave at any time. And um, that adds something to the mix that is really important, I think. It, it makes you much more lighthearted because you know that if this doesn't work out the way I like it, the way it's good for me, then I can go. Um, it's important to have that. And, and of course, I'm not, this is not to advocate like being a diva or being a jackass or, or like um, not being respectful of people and, and like uh, communicating properly. I just mean that if you don't like something, you can just leave, right? But don't be a dick about it. Or at least try not to. <laughs> um, so I guess those are the two main things that I think are um, important for, uh, for improving as a developer. Um, now, is there something that I think makes it harder to improve or like makes you not improve? I don't know. Um, I would say not programming. <laughs> I mean, it sounds obvious, but this is a trap that I've fallen into myself for, for longer periods where I would get caught up in something else. Like, um, uh, like if I go on a vacation for, I mean, I am in Sweden now, so I have like this long, long ass vacation right? Um, and if I go on vacation for say five weeks, then I'm going to be rusty when I get back. And I, at best, will have retained all of my skills and it will take me a minute to get into it again. Probably not the biggest deal in the world. Maybe you should relax. I don't know. For me, I would rather do a little bit of programming, no matter what, um, to stay fresh and to um, stay improving, right? Um, yeah, I don't know. That's that's something that I'm still trying to work out, I think. That's why I don't have some clear opinion about it. Should you take breaks from programming? I've taken breaks and it never ever worked out well. I always came back wishing I would have spent time on programming instead of whatever I was doing. Um, but, I mean, strictly speaking about like personal projects, right? Like I wish I would have spent time on my personal projects rather than whatever else I ended up doing. Um, but I've certainly done a lot of dumb shit in my life, like really, really dumb shit that no one should be doing. And uh, I definitely wish I would have been programming instead. So <laughs> there's that. Um, anyways, I think the, <laughs> the first part of this is the important part. Uh, that that you, you gotta you gotta have your own projects and then you gotta work with other people uh, because working with other people teaches you these skills that just programming by yourself doesn't. Uh, working with other people teaches you how to read code, how to uh, talk to people about your code, how to negotiate about code, how to, um, you know, like all these soft skills, I guess you might call them. Uh, it teaches you how to not be an asshole. Although for some of us, it can take a long time. Um, but we'll, we learn eventually, I hope. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I think I ran out of thoughts here, so <laughs> I guess I'll just say, um, always try to improve, my friends. The sky's the limit. Don't waste your time. Uh, and uh, thank you for hanging out with me on the commute. And I will see you next time. Bye.